Welcome to Virtual Hacker Summer Camp 2020. I am your host, Matt Alderman. We are live streaming and recording. And for this first interview, first one of the day, we're going to welcome Roy Cohen. He is the co-founder and VP of Sales at a company called Vicarious. Roy, welcome. Thanks, Matt. Hi. Great to be here. So uh, you have an interesting background, Roy, which I thought was interesting to start with. You're a former pen tester, but you're also VP of Sales. How does that transition happen? <laughs> Actually, it's exciting. Imagine the, the excitement when you're engaging with the customer and suddenly you can get all technical and like explain stuff. So that's a totally you know, a great uh, capability to have. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, I did spend, I still spend days on the sales side uh, from the engineering side and, and spent a lot of time working with customers over the years. And I think having that skill set uh, that technical skill set to really help walk customers through what you're doing is important. And I think what we want to really focus on here is some of those lessons learned from your pen testing days uh, leading up to the creation of, of Vicarious. And you have this interesting story about some of the politics kind of associated with a pen test and the pen testing results. Kind of explain uh, that story for us. Yeah, sure. So, um, First, um, I would like to share, obviously, back in the days when I was doing a pen test, I, I kind of uh, remember this uh, specific incident. And of course, I got that many stories to share, but I will share my personal one. Um, so one of my uh, first uh, uh, pen tests, when I, which I've done, was uh, at this hospital. Um, so the project was compound of two days of on-site analysis, um, and the remaining was kind of used to, to do the reports. Um, so on the first day, I actually got to the to the to the client. I, I physically sat on the ER room, you know, with a hoodie and all stuff. I was kind of uh, living the moment. Um, so I took my my laptop, connected with an RJ45 to the wall, and like an ordinary black box dentist, I was doing this uh, network scan. I, I guess you are quite familiar with the steps, uh, Matt. Um, so uh, the process was doing some some scanning. I got some some uh, you know some initial insights. Um, I was able to identify some key components over the network. Um, I think one of the crown jewels I was able to identify was uh, a vulnerable Windows Server 2000, which after uh, doing some exploitation attempts, I was able to um, to actually get a hold of um, um, a hashed memory, a hash password in memory, and afterwards it's a, a short process of uh, some brute force in order to to. You know, to reverse it and to get your uh, to get the actual uh, credentials, uh, which appear to be a domain admin. Um, so this was kind of the crown jewel of the pen test, and it that was uh, uh, achieved on the first day. So the second day was kind of uh, you know I was trying to to try my luck and find some some stuff, um, and I actually found this uh, telephony device. Um, like um, I, I noticed they had an IP IP based phone. Um, and I was going through Kali, uh, Kali Linux. I found some utility which allows you to exploit it in some way. Basically, you provide it with an IP, a port, and a parameter, which uh, uh, initiates the exploitation. And I tried to experiment with that. So at the beginning, I, I sent like this parameter, like one, which resulted in nothing. I sent five, I sent 10, nothing happened. Then I got mad at like type 10,000. And all of a sudden, you can imagine all of, the all of the phones in the floor, they all rang, at least for a few seconds. So it was effectively a denial of service for the entire hospital. Yeah, that gets a little uh, uh, crazy there because you know, you're trying to get in how you had to get in is you, you actually kind of DDoS the entire hospital. Uh, so at least they had flags and alerts going off to warn them that something was going on, um, which is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So um, um, obviously I had the domain admin, you know, to, to show in the report and a couple of thousands of vulnerability uh, um, findings I had. Um, but this telephony thing was also something I, I thought was quite crucial to, to add to the report because eventually, you know, domain admin mean obviously something that you should be proud of, but that thing could basically take a hospital to its knees. Mm -hmm. So just before I'm, I'm craft, you know, sending over the report, I met the customer. I had like a conversation with him. 
Um, which in, he told me it was the IT manager. So there was the IT manager and the security officer. Um, so the IT manager kind of told me, look, Roy, um, first of all, there's no way you're going to you know, you're gonna uh, put in the report all of the vulnerabilities you found. There's nothing I can do with the, a couple of thousand of vulnerabilities. You need to pick five. Okay. So I, you know, I kind of you know, tried to, to negotiate and discuss and also, um, you know, try to, to explain, but he wouldn't accept. He said, you need to pick and choose five of the most critical threats. Um, and also, surprisingly, he, he like told me um, the telephony uh, finding that you had, it will not get into the report. And as I, I was asking why, I think it's kind of crucial. I think it's quite important. I, it was unauthenticated vulnerability, which allowed me to, to basically conduct this denial of service. And he said, a, it's not a production machine, which was quite surprising because the phones actually rang. Um, and B, it's going to get replaced. So I gave a call to my team leader. He said, look, Ray, this is the customer. You should you know, accept his notions on it and remove it from the report. Uh, in any case, they're going to, to take this device off. So there's, no, um, there's no, nothing to concern here. Um, but I guess you see where it goes. It's kind of not, not to be surprised. I came back six months later to do another uh, analysis which this is where I found the, tough, you know, the same system was there, was still vulnerable. And, you know, it's unfortunate because they did nothing to, to resolve that. Yeah. yeah, and I think one of the big challenges with penetration testing results, right? And we talk about different kind of levels of penetration testing. There's the scanning part, right? Maybe some people would call a vulnerability scan a pen test right? It's a different level of maturity. Yeah. But then when you get in and you actually, you know, pwn a box or you, you get root and, and you get the credentials like you did in this particular case, how do you then prioritize what's in the report, right? I think this is a big challenge in general. And, and we've seen this in the vulnerability management space for a while anyways, is that when you do a scan, you produce literally thousands of results. How do you really determine what is truly a high risk in what's not. And you have to understand context a little bit. In this particular case, what, what he was telling you was, yeah, it's not a production system or it's getting replaced. Maybe it's not as high a risk because he thought that context was correct. But when you went back six months later, so this has been this ongoing challenge, I think it, with vulnerability scanning and penetration testing for a while. So you know, I think that's kind of the precursor to Vicarious as a company, right? I mean, one of the things you guys are trying to do is help prioritize these different vulnerabilities to understand what really is risky or not. Is that where this evolution came from, is, is through this, this pen testing experience? Precisely, precisely spot on. Um, imagine, again, getting back to the story, imagine me as an external consultant. There is no way I'm able to get the context um, to prioritize effectively uh, and to deliver, you know, the, the key the key threats to the customer, given the fact there is also a, a limited spend for the pen test. You know, I need to try to gather as much information to get some results to generate a report all in a span of a week, approximately. Mm -hmm. um, so you're totally correct. And I think this is like what we try to achieve uh, here at Vicarious. We are um, trying to take um, like uh, proven, battle-proven risk models and to based upon that to prioritize the most critical threats for the client. And not only ones which rely on external feeds, but also we're trying to collect internal uh, uh, key risk indicators. Uh, we, we represent that as a, in a form of uh, hashtags. We call it exploitation tags. Um, and this is what which allows us to pinpoint the most critical threats and the most critical vulnerabilities in real time. You know, it's, it, sometimes customers are amazed. They're going to tell us, no, there's no way this vulnerable process is running with, with high privileges. There is no way I have open ports. You know, we have all of these uh, being evaluated as, you know, uh, being done continuously. And I think this is one of the key uh, uh, value proposition that we can, we can give for our clients. Yeah, and I think is we've seen the market evolve over the past number of years. I mean, I've, I've worked at Qualys. I've worked at Tenable. It, you know, one of the big challenges was you saw this new kind of market emerging, uh, originally called threat and vulnerability management. I think they now call it yeah. risk-based vulnerability management. Yeah. But if you think about the contextual components of it, the scanners typically didn't have some of that context. So they didn't have some of those elements to prioritize. And, and most of the platforms have started to add them in now, right? Which, which I think is yeah. interesting. But you also had a whole market, a kind of a, an adjacency market emerge that was also doing this and aggregating results across multiple scanners, allowing you to add things like business criticality and other things. Mm -hmm. What I think is interesting with what Vicarious does 
is automating some of those variables that are typically static in some of the other solutions. Because how often are you going to go out and update business criticality on an asset, for example? Um, yeah. You know, in your example, we had a telephone system that was supposed to maybe not be in production. Well, that has a different risk level if it's in production or if it's being retired, but then it doesn't get retired, then that risk level has to be re-added. <laughs> and, and keeping up with those dynamics are tough. And I think you guys have done some interesting things to try to solve that dynamic nature of the asset to help with risk prioritization, right? Yeah, precisely that. Um, when we are um, evaluating an environment, we try to uh, first to, to understand where we are positioned. What are the, and we try to do it automatically, of course, without the assistance of the client. To try to understand what is a production machine in which is not a production, um, UAT, for example. Um, we try to understand uh, what, uh, um, um, what vulnerabilities you have and how uh, the behavior of the application and of the machine may either add or uh, reduce the risk of the given, uh, the given application. And I think the magic uh, sits where uh, when we combine the context, we combine the behavioral, which is quite unique again, um, and external feeds all together, this is what helps us to achieve, you know, uh, uh, time after time, you know, clear cut results. Um, I guess, you know, Matt, that every vulnerability um, is eventually the score is compound of a vector with the parameters, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's the, you can do it uh, over the network, go on adjacent, you need high privileges, you know, you have all of these parameters. And one of our uh, uh, key differences is that we actually check this parameter, this vector on, on production, on the actual machines. Mm -hmm. We, we want to check if these vulnerabilities can be actually exploited under your uh, usage, under your uh, environment uh, properties. Right, but you're doing it at the time you're doing the scan and the test, not relying on hypotheticals per se, right? It's, it's actually live. And I think that's what's really interesting with, with some of the things you guys are doing at Vicarious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, eventually the goal here is quite simple. We try to reduce the risk uh, while helping customers to do it in an efficient manner. So aside of our prioritization, we can actually, again, it's all being done continuously and in real time. We try to um, analyze all of the vulnerabilities on a continuous manner. Whenever a new vulnerability emerges, there's also being uh, popped and represented in the system. We also try to actively predict which of the application will be hacked in the future. We'll find uh, vulnerabilities there. Um, then we prioritize based on these uh, key risk indicators we just uh, mentioned. And we help the custo customer also to take an action to, to either patch directly from the system, or we have our own technology, which is called Patchless. So this is our vision to end-to-end -end, uh, vulnerability management. Yeah, I, I, I like the story. Uh, I know you're offering a free trial. If anybody wants to try the product, they can sign up for a, three, a free 30-day trial by visiting securityweekly.com forward slash vicarious. Roy, thank you so much for starting us off on this first interview today. Thanks, Matt. Have a great day. Bye-bye. And thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. We'll see you soon with our next interview.